now for Chia Use of Knowledge is Power broadcast with Dr. Marseille wells Strozier. Information on how to reach Chia will follow today's broadcast. And now, here's your host. And good evening, listeners. Thank you so much for enjoying, for joining me tonight on this rainy evening. I think when it's rainy, it's so beautiful because we get everything that we need. Our grass turned green. Our food is being watered for it to grow. And um, what else happens? Uh, People stay inside. <laughs> you don't have to deal with crazies. Well, you know, it depends on your hairstyle. You may have to stay inside. So, <laughs> Listeners, tonight we're going to be talking about adult literacy. We're going to be talking about adult literacy here in the city of Flint and across America. If you would like to join in on this conversation, please give us a call at 239-5733. Again, the number is 239-5733. Al, how are you doing this evening? I am truly blessed today. Feel and how was good. your week? Week, week was good. It was kind of sore, but soreness, but it was it was good. Sore? What were what were you doing? <laughs> oh man, my I got that sciatic arthritis. Oh, sciatica. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. No you know joke. what? Is it true that when it starts raining, or if you feel like it's going to rain, your joints hurt? Well, I don't think that's true today because it's raining, and I don't feel it today. Oh, okay. Maybe you yeah. healed. No, no, I'm not healed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not healed. Uh, Paul. <laughs> yes, ma'am. How are you today? You know, I am always wonderful when I am in your presence. Oh, that's so oh, sweet. Yes, that's so I'm working sweet. on it, Al. I'm yeah. working on it. He working on it. There's something behind that. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. You need to be, you need to be afraid. <laughs> Before we go into our topic today, that I know there was a shooting um, oh, on no. Pearson Road today at Marathon Gas Station. Oh, really? Marathon, which one? On Pearson and On um, Pearson Road. At Clyde uh, it's really closer to J Jennings Road. Well, you know, there's a whole okay. bunch of radio uh, gas stations that didn't have shootings at, too. Yeah, that is true. So for, and but they locked uh, down the schools, too. Oh. Yeah, so um, there was a 54-year-old lady, I believe that was the age of her. Oh, no. That was shot. So to her family, um, mm. we lift you up in prayer. Right. And to the lady that was shot, not sure what's going on <laughs> there, we also lift you up in prayer. And to the children who had to experience so it, was at the, it was at the gas station, not it was at, at the, the school. at the gas station, but still within a radius because they could not find the individual ah, who did the shooting. So right. they were still at large at that time. Oh, okay. They running around that area. Yes. So they did a lockdown on the schools. So for the children who had to endure that, you're lifted up in prayer as right, well. Right. So um, let's get down to business <laughs> as to what... Some of the issues that we're dealing with here in the city of Flint outside of the water issue and outside of some of the other things that's going on. Mm -hmm. And I've been on several different radio shows and podcasts talking about this issue, which is adult literacy. Right. And here in the city of Flint, we have a big problem with adults over the age of 25 who are struggling with basic reading and basic math skills above the fourth grade level. Right. So, but for those who do have that issue, Flint is just not an exception. This is a problem across the United States. Okay. So when people say, oh, the Flint schools this, oh, the Flint schools that, not necessarily. It is across the United States, the American educational system. Not sure if it was set up for people to fail or if people just weren't participating in their education. It's old. It is old, and it needs to be revamped. But still, even though it's old, we're talking about individuals that are, like, in their 60s. Who went through the old system. Who went through, well, I can't say it was Even the, the old older, system. older system, you know what I mean? If you're 60 yeah. years old, you were before middle schools, um, you know, before a lot of uh, no child left behind kind mm -hmm. of craziness. Mm -hmm. right. But the educational system was just for you to be able to read and write the basics that you need before you can go and work for someone. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what it was for. Um, I won't go into some other things I've learned what it was for, but basically <laughs> it was to teach you the basics in reading and mathematics in order for you to be employable. I, I remember when I was in Parkland, Parkland Elementary, mm -hmm. and um, I had a teacher named Ms. Van Zandt. Mm -hmm. She taught my father. She taught all of my all of my siblings. Wow. She taught all of my father's siblings. Whoa. Yes, yes. Ms. Ms. Um, Ruth Van Zandt. 
at Parkland Elementary, and she, and uh, my father and mother was in the dry cleaning business. Okay. Wait a minute, that name sounds familiar. Yeah. I think I was working on some type of committee for Miss mm -hmm. Van Zandt. Her name sounds so familiar. Yeah, Miss Van Zandt. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. She she was she was um she she was my I think she was my third grade teacher. Mm -hmm. I think. But anyway, we, we had a dry cleaning, mm -hmm. dry cleaners. And um, she used to tell me, she'd say, she say, you need to learn how to read, mm -hmm. right? She said, because you can't read the, the, the customer's um, clothing, mm -hmm. what they got to be put together. Mm -hmm. And I, I, um, I was reading very low, mm -hmm. okay? I think it was maybe below a third grade, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Serious. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still at not at that point. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here in this radio station, so I get a chance to to read over these things. Mm -hmm. I, I I have trouble pronouncing type, type um, names. Mm -hmm. I have trouble um, pronouncing. Some of these things that come off on these um, promos here, mm -hmm. but I sound them out. Mm -hmm. they try to the sound phonetic out. sound, yeah, yeah. phonics. <laughs> uh huh. <coughs> but other than that, though, you know, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to do better by reading every day. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and and I'm here at this station every day, Monday mm -hmm. through Saturday. So mm -hmm. I get a chance to do a lot of um um reading of promos, but that's not the that's not the difference in just um constantly reading a book. You know, I read a book. Mm -hmm. You know, and um so you know, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's real good. Real yeah, good. it's yeah. for a lot of adults. It's not so much that they can't read; they can't comprehend what they're reading really? okay. because of the vocabulary <laughs> words. And a lot of times, if you don't have that certain level of vocabulary and that you use it all the time, right. you're not gonna know what it means. Right. Um, I have some statistics for you: 32 million adults in the United States cannot read, which is 14 percent of the U.S. population. Wow. This is statistics from Say 2017. That again? Say that again. 32 million adults 32 million in the United States cannot read wow. which it, is 14 percent of the US population that's in not bad that's not bad I can't believe you even saying this. 85 percent of us can read but does that mean that 85 percent are adults with children well uh, just of uh, the statistics you gave yeah. you said the 14 percent couldn't read. So that means that the 86% can. But still, that's a, still a big issue, yet you're giving it a rah-rah. Well, I mean, I bet you it was worse. I mean, I can imagine in the, in the, 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 the 20s and the 1800s that the illiteracy rate was not in 80%. True, but can you come back to this century? <laughs> well, I'm oh, just oh, saying that it's... <laughs> Excuse him, folks. Oh, this is not... Excuse this, him, This folks. is your eclectic rambling. This is not eclectic rambling. We got a topic here. <laughs> right, man. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with but your statistics. Paul, oh, this is 20, 2019. Yeah. Okay, so we can go back as the 50s, and I bet you the illiteracy rate was a lot higher than 14%. Maybe it was, but you got to also remember, those people also had a skill. No. Did, no, 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 no. That generation had a skill. If it was woodwork, if it was um, mechanics, if it, and these are people who necessarily didn't go to school. They were taught a skill from a family member, and they most likely went into business, or they used that as a side job, a hobby. The generation that we have now, they are below the level that we're talking about here. Right here in the city of Flint, okay. um, we're talking about adults 25 years of age and older. 42% of these adults do not hold a high school diploma nor a GED. 42% don't have a high school diploma. Yes. And 34.9% of, of this population had some college credits but no associate's degree. 42% mm. of the residents in North Flint live below poverty. The unemployment rate of adults 25 years of age is 27.2%. So let's go back to literacy. When you are a parent, it is very important that you know how to do basic reading and basic math in order to help your children. 
When you have adults who cannot read and comprehend, that creates a big problem when it's rearing children. Now, don't tell me that back in the day, things have changed a lot. A lot of kids didn't go to the doctor back in the day. Old school knew how to take care of you. <laughs> this new generation don't know how to take their take care of their children. So what did it? What but did now they, they don't have to read. They watch a YouTube video. Oh my god! And they figure out how to get some kind of herbal remedy to solve the problem. Huh. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. And I understand. I understand what you're saying. Not being able to read is definitely a, a, a setback for whomever is dealing with it. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line that 50 percent or 40 percent haven't graduated high school, if maybe they woke. Define woke to they, the population. Well, woke understanding that the school system that we are mandated to attend and go to is rigged. Actually, you're not mandated. You have to do, I think you have to do either school or, or homeschooling, home don't you? Homeschooling, but there's a little, little bit behind that homeschooling. But yeah, you do have to report that your child is some in, ty in some type of academic so, program. So, so when I say woke... That they understand that's an agrarian system, and it was designed to pump out farmers and crop sharecroppers, mm -hmm. and that that's not the route they want to go. What does that have to do with here in the city of Flint? Well, you're saying that 40% of the people in the city of Flint yes. do not have a high school education or a GED. Yes. And... I'm saying that well, maybe that's a rebellion against the messed up educational system and not a failure in, in those individuals and in not being able to attain those degrees. Well, if it's a rebellion, how is it helping you as a citizen that has to provide or a family, you have to provide for your family. So how is that a rebellion that is helping you? That large number, I bet you they're, they're finding a way to get along. Mm. Well, then can you explain the crime? I don't know that the crow. Well, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure that. A, I'm sure Can that, you explain I, some I'm sure of the that 100 percent of the crime is done by people without GEDs, but 100 percent of people without GEDs aren't doing 100 percent of the crime. Well, we're not talking about 100 percent. We're talking about 42 percent of the population here in the city of Flint, which has declined to like I think it's what 82,000 that live in the city of Flint. We could claim that. 82,000, almost half the population. Almost half the population did not complete 12th grade. Amazing. I am working with adults at our Adult Lit uh, Literacy Center, which is Chi Adult Skills Center. They are at the 0 through 4th grade level in reading and math. <laughs> now, on top of that, I have individuals who have graduated from high school. Right. And they're still at the 0 through 4th grade level in reading and math. You mentioned something else. That I, what's advanced reading? Advanced reading, are you talking about... Uh, you said basic... You, well, you said that they don't have basic reading skills. The average level and I don't know. should be at a seventh grade level. So uh, uh, eighth grade is advanced, or are we talking reading War and Peace as opposed to Run, Dick, Run? We're talking about adult literacy. When it comes to children, you're supposed to be at the grade level. Actually, they just implemented something in the... Um, across the state of Michigan. If a child isn't reading at its level at third grade... Mm -hmm they will be held back. held back. Okay, so advanced reading is reading large words or uh, difficult difficult words to define. You know what I mean? I, I'm trying well, to understand. Well, you're talking about something K-12. I'm thinking I'm basic not... reading is being able to read street signs and prescriptions and well, being able to... Well, that's the whole thing. A lot of the things that are written, even the newspaper, is at 5th to 6th grade level. Okay. So when you're working with adults who are at the 0 through 4th grade level, they can't even read those basic things. Okay. Um, have you ever tried reading your um, the medication, the, the, the paperwork that comes with it, that tells you exactly uh, what the medication Pyro, Fido, Cytosin, yeah, and Seco, you know. and, and sometimes, you know, the, the thing about medical terminology, if you know the prefixes and suffixes, you can basically figure everything out. But what's very important now is that you have to have those basic skills, number one, to apply for a job. Apply for a job. A lot of the jobs now are just not asking you your name, your address, and phone number. They're asking some critical thinking type questions where you have to type in an essay. So if you can't speak correct, you know writing and speaking goes together. So if you do not speak correct English, you will not write correct English. If you can't read and comprehend what they're asking you to write, you're not going to be able to 
fill out the application. Well, I'm 100% with you. I mean, reading, writing, arithmetic are basics, mm -hmm. and they're necessary to do almost anything. Mm -hmm. But once you get past that, if you're not looking for a job mm -hmm. and you want a career or an occupation or a business, mm -hmm. maybe you can bypass that. Sometimes you can, but like if you go into like a vocational trade program, mm -hmm. they expect for you to be at a certain level when it comes to reading and math. So you still have to have that basic skill set in order for you to go into something that's not not that's something well, that's not Well, I can give you a, a fine example. Go I ahead. mean, I was a, a Mason's apprentice. Okay. And I wasn't good at math. I didn't know trigonometry or calculus or all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But under his tutelage, mm -hmm. he showed me the real world use for those things. I didn't know it was calculus. But go back. That goes back to what I was saying about the... Um, the, sh the uh, residents, not the residents, the people the who were born, the generation. I think it's called the golden age is, is what, they, what they were called. Yeah, the golden age came before the baby boomers. Okay. But it goes back to what I was saying. They had someone who taught them a skill set. This generation now do not have anyone that's teaching them a skill set. Okay. So you had someone that taught you a skill set. Mm -hmm. But keep going with your conversation. Sorry, but you just made me think about well, that. Well, he, he was illiterate. Mm-hmm. He didn't know how to read. Mm -hmm. But he sure showed me how to stack 24 bricks, 44 by 66 by 22. Mm-hmm. You know, he knew how to do all that. He knew how to measure heights mm -hmm. and, and get the walls right and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But we have laws. I'm sure he, ta he was taught that as a child. Right. And we have laws now that, you know, kids can't work at a certain age. Yeah. You know, and, and another thing, too, back then there was two parents in the household. So when you had two parents in the household, father taught you something and mother taught you something. So when you have a population of, or should I say a generation, that is headed mostly by females and not the males, I'm sure there's not a lot of women that's teaching their son brick mason. Agreed. Women struggle the most in math. Um, that I come across in adult literacy. Really? The men, depends on what type of job they hold, I have men that doesn't, they, they don't do well in math, which surprises me. I was taught by a gentleman who was, um, I want to put the right word out there. I'll put it, um, he was the head of this one um, men's substance abuse program. Okay. And he told me about a drug dealer. And he said, you will always know, know a drug dealer if he was a good drug dealer, according to his math skills. So when I get these men who come into my program, I really pay attention to their math skills. And I came across this one guy. His reading was second grade level, but his math scores was 12th grade level. So that told me something. So I pulled him over to the side and I asked him. He wouldn't own up to it. I said, it's only between you and I. I won't say anything to anyone. And he told me, yes, he sold heroin. He said, how did you know? I said, your math skills. So. Men have a tendency to Well, do now that. I'm just scared. Why are you scared of If I'm good at math, everybody's going to assume I'm a dope dealer? No. Huh? No, I'm going to have to fake it like 2 plus 2 is 7. <laughs> no. I'm not going to have you on my show anymore. You just... I'm sorry. That's just no. a, that, that's the takeaway what, I My hear. thing is, what I'm saying is that <laughs> a lot of times men are better in math because of the type of things that they do. The brick masonry, the construction. Right. Auto mechanics, those type of things. Women, mm, I don't want to sound sexist or anything. Women don't do a lot of things that deal with math that they know. Time management. Uh, that, that we know that we're utilizing those mathematical skills. Okay, okay. A lot of times we think of math when it's cooking. Mm -hmm. However, women use math all the time, every single day, but we don't know that we're using it. So when you sit down with a female and you try to work with them with um, multiplication and division, Something that I use is constructivism. Constructivism is when you use outside experiences and you integrate it into the classroom lesson in order for it to be relevant to a We're person. We're going to Cedar Point. How many diapers do I need to bring? Well, yes. <laughs> 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 Women can grasp that so much, but they don't know that they've been doing addition, multiplication, and subtraction. Mm -hmm. So... 
again, it's very important that these parents have these basic skills in order to help their children. Because this is something that a lot of parents don't understand, is that this, your, your classroom teacher has 30 children in a classroom. Mm -hmm. And I like the scenario because I asked, well, if you were a babysitter, could you manage 30 children at one time? If the rope is long enough. Anyway, so the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you expect a teacher who have 30 different personalities to be able to assist each and every one of those children at their level right. or individually? They can't. No so therefore, they need that parental help. And one of the most important things is that the parent is able to help their children with their homework. And a lot of times, if the parents don't understand the homework, who don't know how to read and write, it is so imperative that you let that, that parent, that teacher know. Because that teacher would take some things in consideration and also can refer you to a program in order to help you. Mm -hmm. Some of these parents who are functioning at these lower levels really think it's the school's responsibility to teach their children everything, and it's not. They didn't teach them. Right? They most likely went through the school system and came out not being able to read. And it's almost like welfare. They come to find out that people who are on welfare is generational. But somewhere you got to break the cycle. If you have to break the cycle for your kids or you have to break your cycle for the betterment of yourself. You can't, not saying to all people who are reading at these lower levels, because we do have some people, what? You think it's still as stigmatized as it used to be, not being able to read? I mean, you're talking about these large numbers, so there's a camaraderie among folks. There's a large amount of people that don't know how to read. And if you knew that Jim couldn't read, would you be more willing to accept help? Because you know, Jim, you know, you know that 8 out of 12 people on your block can't read. Mm -hmm. Does that make it easier for you to seek help? Go again. What is your question or a statement? Well, what are you saying? I'm just thinking that if we normalize the fact that a lot of people can't read and take the stigma away from not being able to read at an older age that well, we can get more age? people. Let's go back. What's the age? 99. Oh, come on now. Be serious. What is the age that you're talking about? Well, I'm thinking if I'm 40 years old or 30 mm -hmm. years old, I might have a problem fessing up to not being able to read. Okay. I might want to hide it and use my coping skills until mm -hmm. death do us mm -hmm. part. You know what? Coping skills. There was a study that was done about um, females who were on welfare mm -hmm. and they had lower reading scores. Okay. And they come to find out that a lot of their shopping carts had brand name items in, in their shopping cart because they couldn't read the back of the boxes or the, the, the they couldn't do comparison shopping because they couldn't read and comprehend the information. Right. So let's go back to what you're asking me. The stigmatism? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can get out of that stigmatism or not. I mean, we as a society create it. But we have a stigmatism as to what people think about people of color. Right, but that, that's a toughie. Uh, that's a toughie. Uh, I mean, if you're talking about welfare mothers, we know that the others have more on welfare than the us. That is true, or else there would so be it's no more, welfare. So it's right more now. beneficial to them mm -hmm. to do this uh, illiteracy mm -hmm. thing as well. Mm -hmm. So there, there's motivation there. True. Of, others mm -hmm. so that i don't think i don't think that's going to get in the way like you know with the opioid crisis they're mm -hmm. changing the laws so opioid kids don't go to jail true they changed the laws the other way when crack was popular but let's mm -hmm. not digress mm -hmm. um you can get um illiteracy i don't know you know i'm a big fan of, of, of public service announcements go ahead. and they use public service announcements to do all sorts of wicked things mm -hmm. They should be harnessed to do some decent things. Give me an example. Of wicked things? Uh, yeah, from public service announcements. Oh, well, you know that whole Indian commercial? No. Back in the day with the Indian crying? Uh-uh. Oh, Indian this had to do crime? with polluting? Yes. A lot of that stuff is propaganda. That was totally, that was the corporation. But you have to understand, though, but this is you and I talking. You, me, you and I are... We've been exposed to different things. But when we're talking about adults who haven't been exposed to stuff like you and I are talking about, they wouldn't know what the word propaganda is. But they're ta they got to be taking their cues from video sources. But see, that's another thing, too. That's how they're also controlled. Right. So, I mean, 
So you still have to know how to read and write in order for you to comprehend things for yourself. Or else someone is going to do it for you. Agreed. So we have modern technology. But do you think even in the family, the family doesn't know they can't read, that they're hiding it that tough? I mean... The wife knows, the cousin knows, you know, well, they have you know people what? around them that can help them Sometimes navigate. Sometimes it depends if a, birds of a feather flock together. You got five Sometimes. You got five seconds to close this show out. Wow, how you going to interrupt my show like this? You so rude. I am so sorry. I'm a, I'm a producer. I'm a director. Yes. I'll let you slide for the night. <laughs> <laughs> you forgive me? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, um, birds of a feather flock together. So go back. It's almost like teenagers. Uh -huh. Okay? In a group, you may have, let's say there's 10 guys hanging out. And in the group, you may have eight that really can't read. But really? two that can read. Okay. But they would dumb themselves down in order for them to be accepted by the other eight. I can see that. So, a lot of times I do come across adults who used to hang out with other individuals who couldn't read and write. They could, but because they have been around other people who couldn't read and write for such a period of time, they also diminish those skills in reading and writing. Wow. So instead of bringing the other folks up... Oh, yeah, they get sucked right back. Because, again, if you have the skill sets, why would you hang around people like that anyways if you want to bring yourself up? Because you feel like you are up. Well, I mean, if, if, you if you're the one helping everybody, that kind of gives you an ego boost, I'd imagine. It makes you feel like, you know, you're you're the top of dog of the group. I'm the one that can read, so these guys really need me. Yeah, but after a while, you got to let them go or else they're going to suck you back in. Well, you got to bring them up to your level, if nothing else, or you're not... You're not going to be, you know, you're not being successful. Uh -huh. If you can't help them learn to read like you know how to read, I don't think you're, uh, you're doing it. Well, Al, I'll make sure <laughs> that Paul isn't on my show again. <laughs> <laughs> he can stay right behind the cameras. Mm -hmm. Because I like to talk according to experience. Um, and my experience with adults, I know you hypothetically speaking. Not always. But it's really um, a problem when adults can't read and write above the fifth grade level. And when we're talking about people who are parents of children and they're at or below the level that their children are, they can't help them academically. How do you get them to seek help? Is I guess is the bottom line question for me. How do, how do you convince me as somebody who can't read that I need to? Well... One of the first things that we do, we, well, let me, how much, how much time I have? Because you know I'm going to talk. I'm not saying nothing. Uh, I, I was, I was chastised for directing. If there's any adults over the age of 25 and uh -huh. you know that you are not able to read or write or do math above the fourth grade level, please give Chia Adult Skills Center a phone call at 810-553-2140. Again, the number is 810-553-2140. We do not do group sessions at our Adult Learning Center. Mm. We do one-to-one -one with adults because of that reason. Privacy. Yes. Nice. And only person who knows whatever level you're at is you and your instructor. Now, well, you sounds, see sounds other people problem, there, right. yeah, you see other people there, but you're all in the same boat. So, if you have any problems in basic reading and math, the number is 810-553-2140. If you live in the zip codes of 48504, 48505, and 48506, the program is free for you. So, please, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. We are here to help you. Again, the number is 810-553-2146. Did I say that right? 553-214? I Zero. Oh, I'm getting my numbers mixed up. <laughs> I am so sorry, audience. It's eight what it's eight one zero five five three two one four zero. So please forgive me for that. Al? Yes. We're gonna have Tulaney Persons here next week. Okay. And she's gonna be talking about time management. Time management. Time management. Yes. So, listeners, thank you so much again for joining me on this beautiful Thursday night and have a wonderful week. For the with your host, Dr. Marseille Wells-Strozier.